Best no, decision? I think the letter, the letter was confusing. Many people did not understand. A lot of people call my phones for clarification. We were also seeking clarification almost everywhere. From the judgment or from the lines on the letter, two things are clear. One of the things that is clear is that they have brought a closure to Office of National Security as the presidency. Number two, now Kandapa has not gotten a deputy, which he has not gotten for all these years. Number three, we are now going to have two ministers at the Ministry of Interior, and his role and his designation has not been fully clarified. What then happened is that just like Ayahuasca was welcome, the contradictions and the discrepancies you saw between him in the office of the presidency and Mr. Kandapa, who is the minister of state at the Blue Gate, we prayed and hope that that two do not play up at the Ministry of Interior. When that one happens, what then happens is this. The, the key technical officers, the police, the BNI, the immigration, all the security operators who have problems as to who to report to and who do we take responsibility when it comes to something that the nation needs to take responsibility for. Who is the head? Who do we take permission from to do A, B, C, D? And who is really the core person there? I would have loved for them to say that he's going there as a deputy to Ambrose Derry. But the way it is crafted and the way it is today, we are having two ministers at the Ministry of Interior. And it is early days here, so we will have to wait and see how it unfolds. So, so far, your reading is that per the designation, uh, we may be seeing the same kind of confusion we saw at the national security when it came to the issue of what happened at Iowa so West Wagon. When you put people in place and you do not give clarity, and there's no purpose, and there's no street instruction. People create vacuum, and anything can happen within that vacuum. It is of no reason that when we assign a minister, we say, this minister is going here with this portfolio, and these are their responsibilities. In security, there's something we call authority, and there's something we call responsibility. So that somebody must take authority, and whose authority are you acting, and who gives the final instruction, and who takes the final responsibility. That is what we did not have. So when you look at Ayahuasca West Wagon, there was a contradiction and a confusion between Mr. Kandapa and the office at the presidency. I hope that this particular appointment, because we are having two ministers at the Ministry of Interior, their roles will be clearly defined, and we will have somebody being in charge of particular instructions so that people who are taking those instructions will know that this one is coming from here and this one takes the final responsibility. Mm. So the first thing you would like to hear from the presidency is a clarification of what Mr. Brani Champo will be, at the, uh, will be doing at the Ministry of the Interior. Definitely, because I would have loved they would have said he's a deputy minister, but wisely or craftily, they left it as minister of state. Then you have a substantial minister. What is going to be their rules and responsibility? It must be fully clear. So that when people are taking instruction, insecurity is so much important. We call it command and control. The structure will need to be clearly defined because of responsibility and because of actions that could have ramifications on whoever is either giving the instruction or whoever is taking the instruction. And it is so clear that the innocent guys on the field must have this clarity Can we also say that perhaps then the president might be enjoying the confusion because this issue of the confusion of rules was copiously referred to in the Iowa West Wagon Commission's report. So if the president at least read that report, the president would have, would have at least taken some cue from it and in making this appointment will ensure some level of clarity. So can we suggest that the president enjoys the state of affairs and the confusion when it comes to that issue? Yeah, the constitution of Ghana, the president is the only one who can hire and fire at that level, and he appoints the people who take responsibility. To that extent, we can always refer issues of clarity to the presidency or the president to answer, since he's the appointing authority in this particular case. But going back to the Ayawaso West Wagon, if you look at the recommendations that came from recommendation 5.1 to 5.8, it talks about the national security structure, and many of the things they said there are red flags and to help us to identify the early warning signs. But to the extent that is government commission, government has the right to reject, and unfortunately, they rejected almost everything 
in the commissioner's report. If they had, had hope uphold that particular report, we would have built extensively better with our security infrastructure and it wouldn't have created many problems for us in the future. But hey, there again, we missed that opportunity and I hope that going forward, we would have wake up to our responsibilities, applied ourselves to the tenants of the jobs we have been assigned to do, so that Ghana will be the winner. Well, let's, going back to the commission's report again, one of their key, key recommendations were, was for the reprimand of Mr. Briny Champo. This particular appointment, uh, uh, I was just speaking to a security analyst who felt that it is rather a promotion and an encouragement, sort of like patting him on the back. Uh, is that what you are also reading? Oh, let's take away uh, reprimand and appointment. Appointments always come when individuals are fit to serve their nation. And to the extent that we have a, a constitution that says that the president has the right to appoint A, B, C, D. What then is important is that as people, we need to set in procedures and processes so that when people are not living to them or they are not performing per the standard, we can hold them accountable. What happens in this country is that people take positions, they go for the booty and they leave their responsibilities right from the top downwards. And that is what is affecting our productivity in this country. To that extent, it's an appointment they have given him and he must be aware of the responsibility that comes with appointment. Even double in that particular report and even the, the operational team at National Security where the commission clearly said that they need to abolish and they need to do A, B, C, D. Nothing of those things have been done. You cannot blame them because this is government who have set up a commission and they put white paper on it. And that is where we are today. I'm asking those questions because you, you keep mentioning accountability. And the question is, is the president then accounting for what happened at Ayawasu West Wagon with this kind of appointment? Uh -huh. You see, in some other jurisdictions, uh, because of the way their constitution is structured, even the president is held accountable. In this particular place where we are, the president or the presidency, whoever become a president, is like a king with all manner of powers. They can do anything and everything, and they are allowed by the constitution that appoints them as the president. And the rules of accountability is not so much within our constitution. And so, therefore, it's not only the presidency, but in every aspect of life or in our public life and the public offices. When you don't have right people there and there's no sound judgment and there's no creativity, people will hide under the constitution per the terms of the appointment, per the terms of the appointing authority, and all manner of things will be done. I would have loved that we would have applied ourselves to best practices across the world. And whoever has been appointed to do job A or B, you would have come with the best practices and be the best. Otherwise, we have no way, and so there's no way you could hold any of those guys responsible for any action. That is why up to today, based on what happened in Ayawasu West Wagon, nothing has been done. You remember when they were even doing the one-year anniversary, there was a letter from the police that said that no police officer should go near where ABCD is happening. That is the level we have reduced ourselves to. Should we be worried? Because the NDC is also raising the point that this appointment is essentially to, to give him the, the, the legality or the legal framework to replicate what he did at Ayawasu West Wagon on a national scale. Now you're handing him national, uh, the, the, the police force and telling him to perhaps do the same thing. Should we be worried? Or is the NDC taking it a little too far? Maybe not from the point of the NDC, but everybody should be worried when we have uh, people appointed to such positions with less clarity, not with NDC. But almost everybody should be worried because in elections in Africa, or security in Africa, not just in Africa, is so key to your survival and progress. To that extent, when it comes to NDC and MPP, apart from the contentious issue we have with the new voters register, that is it. Otherwise, by now, the two parties and the major or the smaller party would have been cheering themselves, preparing for the national election campaign would have started by now. I am saying that when we are going for the new voters register, let's go for it. If we are not going by it by the reason that the time is too short, let's clear it off our table and let the two parties prepare themselves. Remember, we have gone to Supreme Court and Supreme Court said that you can only win the election at the police station. And so therefore, it's important that the parties 
prepare themselves, appoint the right people, people who have understanding of elections, and let them be at the police station. But when it comes to confusions and conflict, elections have created many problems across the world. And I hope somebody is listening and knowing that anything that goes wrong with our elections, it will not only create problems for NPP and NDC, but for the whole of West Coast and Africa and Ghanaians as a whole. Mr. Kumar, always a pleasure talking to you. But before you leave, I don't know if you saw that uh, letter that was written to the men's go customers by the regional commander of the police in Accra. Uh, uh, did you see that letter? I, I saw it, but I couldn't read it. I was just about reading it when your call came. Oh, okay. Okay, in the letter, he says that they are not allowing any demonstration this time, uh, uh, during this period, because they are actually... Uh, pursuing a, a war against crime, so nobody will be allowed to demonstrate. Secondly, the men's go customers are already demonstrated six months ago. They cannot be demonstrating just like that, so it will not be allowed. And that is it, to, is it in the prerogative of the police to uh, to tell the people when to demonstrate, when not to demonstrate? <laughs> and, and I thought with the laws we have in Ghana that talks about public order and public safety, when people are demonstrating, the responsibility of the police to come to their aid. And to the last extent, the police can go to court for a court order restraining the people from demonstrating. But the police cannot just write a letter to anybody and say, you cannot demonstrate. One, everybody has the right to demonstrate in this dispensation, especially when their money has been locked and nobody is paying. Now, if they ask the police people to help them retrieve their money, would they ask in that capacity? I think we need to act properly in democracy. It's rule of law, and anybody could take on anybody at any time. And to that extent, if that's exactly what the letter said, then I think those who wrote the letter will need to reconsider and look at it again.